Amazing. Thank you everyone for joining the Cosmos community call. Um, it's We've had a lot happen in the past month from Cosmoverse and many other, much other code being written and a lot of designs in discussion. And so I wanted to give a quick update to everyone. So starting out, um, I wanted to start out with Auto CLI. It's been talked about for a bit. Um, I'm happy to say that the team, uh, Julian and Atish, have completed the migration of all modules in the SDK. So if you see, there's only a few CLI commands, and those are the ones with custom logic, um, since we're not able to automatically generate those. But uh, everything else is migrated. And so within the modules, you'll see the client folder is gone from a lot of them. and. So super excited there. And that means if you are a chain upgrading to 50, then you will have auto CLI, um, custom, but more, uh, more custom auto CLI than if you were to use it with a chain prior to 47 that just works off right above. Store. So as you know, we've been rewriting store and um, this here, we've been rewriting store for a while. Let me just see. If, okay, we've been rewriting store for a while and there's been some interesting learnings there. So uh, we've been working on three separate databases for the state storage, which are SQLite, PebbleDB and RocksDB. Then you'll have the option to choose between those three. Um, for the commitment structure, um, as part of 50, we released IVLv1. IVLv1 has the key change. Uh, we're writing a blog post on that, so stay tuned. And there's been an increase in performance and less I.O. due to compaction there. Queries definitely got more performant. And uh, now we're talking about potentially IVLV2 and what would that look like. And so we're going through some small design phases and just seeing what, are, what would be the benefits here of writing an IVLV2 for existing users. For future users, we are discussing potentially um, working on um, working with an external team on a SMT structure. So for chains joining the Cosmos ecosystem, they have the option to go from IVL or to go to IVL or SMT. They're not tied to IVL. And there's some added benefits to both. And so that work is progressing quite, quite well. Um, we should be doing uh, whole level benchmarks of the entire state machine. Pretty soon here, we're just waiting on a final couple PRs. The, the test will be with IVLv1, but the performance should be much better. If you have any questions on any of the items, just give it a shout and, uh, and I can answer them or call in someone from the team in the crowd to answer them. Next, uh, as you saw in the blog post, we release optimistic execution. Um, that was done by Facundo on the Cosmos SDK team, their uh, optimistic execution begins the execution of transactions during consensus. And so this would uh, potentially have the benefit to cut block times in half if you are aiming for faster blocks. If you're not, then potentially you might save a few seconds, um, but it really depends on your use case. And a user like Say, Say implemented it before us and they observed a, uh, 50% reduction in block times. That will also be part of 50. Now the runtime working group, we're really diving in as the team has been concluding a lot of the work scopes uh, that have been going on in parallel. We're starting to really dive into the runtime and what I what the core runtime. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at base app and you look at the base app struct, it has everything. It's this huge hodgepodge of stuff, but it's very hard to make things somewhat modular. If you want to rewrite it, you have to like maintain compatibility with the SDK version of base app and it's quite complex. And so we want to really modularize this layer, separate the app manager. Um, so the uh, module manager from the consensus layer, the mempool layer, the PP layer, so people can swap those layers out. But then also uh, the part of the proposal that we'll be writing an ADR on is separating transaction validation from pre and post hooks of transactions, uh, transaction types, and various other components. And this really dives in on rewriting the server package to make it more modular, easier to maintain, but also uh, allow people to swap things out more easily without having to look and read base app in the current state. 
So that has been uh, commencing and we have a working group for runtime and store. So if you do want to join, just give a shout. Um, now 0 0.50. Um, so we are actually ready to cut the 0 0.50 release. We're just working on writing a final test case. Um, we just want to make sure a certain edge case is covered and writing the test case has been quite complex. Um, we have the team over at Origitech uh, assisting on it as well. And we should, the ideal goal is we have that uh, test case covered. So we can really assure that the edge case that we are looking at is covered or if we need to make some changes. So that is the only thing blocking um, the release right now. And so we were aiming for this week. Um, the developer uh, that was leading that, uh, leading that PR uh, had to jump out for eye surgery. And so that's why it's a bit delayed. So I apologize, but we are getting there and we will have it out this month for sure. Um, look, look forward for, uh, look towards a blog post coming out potentially next week already in preparation for the final release. Any questions on those items? Awesome, awesome. I forgot to mention, um, there's also a simulator rewrite going on as well. So Elias from the Regitech team is leading the efforts behind a rewrite of the simulator and really reduce the complexity and make it uh, reduce the import cycles with the simulation package and make it easier to write kind of make it as easy as writing a go test case uh, unit test and so he's been writing has some has a pr open so if you want to read the potential um, design then that is open uh, for review i can also link the pr one second I can't find it at all. Yeah, there we go. So the idea behind is also to port it to test detail network. And so before the simulator was running on a Fox Merkle tree, and so it wasn't really testing real world scenarios, it was testing mainly for panics in the code. And so now it's being ported to test utility network. Um, we're working with teams like uh, Cosmology um, with the Comet Mock team to potentially abstract test, util test util network into an interface where you would be able to plug in Starship, um, the current uh, Comet or Comet Mock. And so you'd be able to test different of um, of test uh, different scenarios of how your application would act. This would also bring in the benefit of potentially testing with things like Rollkit as it comes along. On that note, if no one has any questions, we can actually just go straight into the Comet Mock presentation. Awesome, I think you can take it away, Philip. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, this should be it. Okay, you should be able to see uh, code now. Or a terminal, rather. Cool. Um, all right, let me, let me get rid of my, my trial run here. Um, so Comet Mock is something that we developed at Informal Systems just to help us test interchain security. We run a lot of end-to-end -end tests, and um, our issues with those were that they are sort of unpredictable, so at times, Tests will just behave differently depending on block times, depending on some very um, small subtleties. And also, we just don't have control over certain things. For example, testing some border, like borderline behavior, when what happens when you, um, like when you miss exactly the amount of blocks in the downtime window to get slashed. Things like this are sort of possible to test with integration tests, but in end-to-end -end tests, it's really hard. Um, so we developed Comet Mock which is just a mock implementation of Comet BFT that you put your application on top of, and then you have a lot of control that you wouldn't have if you were running a real consensus engine. Um, so I think the best thing is if I just um, show you, if I just um, show you. So this is just a script to um, start a, a test net 
um, that has three validators. So this is all sort of normal stuff you would do to set up and. Oh, thanks. Um, so this is just normal stuff you would do to set up a test net. Mm, there's one difference. So when you start your nodes, you're going to tell them that they don't need to run their own Tendermint instance or Comet instance. So you just tell them not to start Tendermint. They run with it out of the process. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to run Comet Mock. Um, and it's going to connect. So these three addresses are at the addresses of the of the applications. So it's a three node validator, a uh, three validator test net. Um, and we got that running. Um, and so far, it looks sort of like um, like a normal test net. So I can demonstrate, for example, um, we can check the we can check um, we can check the print block. And I think I put, which would be local host. Yeah, so we can get we can get the, the current block, but now we're on height. Um, we're on height thirty one, and what? So transactions and everything works just as normal. So we can um, we can do things like transfers. Any sort of transaction will work, but we have some extra stuff that we can do. So for example, let's. Um, yeah, let's actually see the current block height a bit better here. So this just gets the, the block height out of this big string. So right now we're on block 64. And one thing we can do is just produce a lot of blocks um, without waiting for the application, essentially, to um, without waiting for, for consensus. We can just tell the application to produce blocks as fast as we want. So comment mock takes um, RPC calls. So essentially, like that. yeah, there we go. Um, so there's an RPC call um, just by a curl. So what it does here is you tell it to advance blocks. You tell it how many how many blocks to advance by. So in this case, 500. And once I do that, so in the other window, you'll see this is the output from comment mock. So it's running through blocks very, very fast and just producing 500. Um, and then if we go here again, we're going to see that now we're on block like 600. Um, so for each of these blocks, um, the application runs all its logic, right? So you get begin block, end block, and so on. You just don't get any transactions because it just produces empty blocks, essentially. Um, so this is cool for testing, but it's not super useful yet. You could just do that by waiting. Um, so let's see something else that's cool, which is um, manipulating the time. So here um, is the current time of the of the box that we produce. So it's pretty much right now. And comment mock also also allows you to manipulate the timestamp. So let's see, but, um, just another call to be advanced time, and then we give it the duration in seconds. And let's take. I got something that should be about. There we go. Okay, that should be about. Uh, let's make that. Now it should be about half a year. Worth. So if we see the time again, now we get like a much bigger time stamp. Um, so what this is useful for is, for example, if you want to vote on governance proposals, testing that is sort of annoying because you actually have to wait for some amount of time to um, let the governance proposal pass if you run your end-to-end -end tests, right? And with this, instead of having to wait, you just tell it to, hey, can you just make a later time stamp? Um, right now, it's just the it's just the, the um, these raw requests. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, that wasn't in, re in response to a question in the chat, which was, um, is there an API to interact with it? Right now, it's just these um, these raw requests. Um, but I think there's um, it's still an early phase. Let's say it's it's prototype. We are using it already in our tests, but um, it so far it's not really built to be very nice to use. So I think that's something that we're definitely open to adding. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's time, and then I have a couple more things that I want to show you. So one is um, actually invoking downtime. So if we see, um, so we can see the validators that are signing blocks right now. Um, that's these three these three validators, which is the three applications I started in my in my script. 
Um, and what I can do is I can just tell one of the applications to stop signing blocks. So first I'll have to grab the key of the validator. Um, so essentially this will just get from the from the home directory from the node home, it'll get the key. And now we'll tell comic mock um, to not sign with that key anymore. Um, so let's see this. So what this does is we tell it to set the signing status um, of this one validator. And we're going to set the signing status to down. So it just means it will stop signing blocks. And if we check the slashing, we see that uh, yeah, this validator is starting to sign blocks, yeah, starting to not sign blocks. And now we can use another feature. So if we wanted to actually get a downtime slash, we'd have to wait for a couple of blocks now, right? But of course, this is what this is what the, the power that comic mock provides us actually gives us. We can just advance blocks, right? So I'll I'll just do that command again. So we'll advance by 500 blocks, and then the validator will have missed the downtime window, and essentially it'll get it'll get jailed. And of course, much faster than actually having to wait for 500 blocks. And now we should see that yeah, this validator here is just jailed until uh, sometime in the future. And then another thing similar to downtime is we can actually make double signs. So we can get one of the one of the validators to double sign. Um, it's also the, the pattern repeats. It's also just a um, a request. So here, um, just called cost double sign. And it won't do anything if I run it now because the validator that the private key is from is already jailed. So. Um, let me take, so this is just taking the key from a different validator, so this takes Alice. Um, and now if I call this, we're going to check the slashing again. And now we'll see that this validator here is jailed forever and it's tombstone because it double signed. Um, yeah, this is sort of the, the extra features that Comet Mock provides us. Um, the, the sort of hidden feature that you see on the left-hand side here is comment mark is very, very good at producing blocks at the speed you set it to. So right now, this is set to have a one-second block, block time. Um, and essentially, it's just because comment mark calls the application directly. There's no, there's no gossiping. Essentially, you can imagine all the applications sit on top of one process and it, of one, um, one client that calls these servers. Um, so this is possible due to the separation of the application and the consensus via ABCI, right? So comment mark just calls the ABCI um, interfaces just as comment would so in the same order. And to the applications, it looks like, uh, like ABCI is running. Um, so in our tests for entry and security and for the Cosmos Hub, um, we're, we're using it already right now. Mostly we started using it to make our tests faster. One thing that um, this makes faster is waiting for transaction inclusions. So when you tell the comment mock to, so when you hear, do a transaction, yeah, I haven't shown you a transaction, but um, if you call transactions on a chain, it will include them immediately in the next block. There's no gossiping, there's no mempool to go through. It does call check the X, but it doesn't have to gossip the transaction, so it will just immediately be included. Um, and the other thing that is much faster is waiting for voting periods any reason you would sleep, now you can instead just advance the time. And to your application, it doesn't really matter. The application gets the timestamp from Comet. So if Comet mock tells it a certain time, the application will just take it and be happy with that. Um, yeah, one thing, so in our tests, it got the time to run our end-to-end -end tests down by like 80%, went from a bit more than 10 minutes to a bit more than two minutes. Um, so we're pretty happy with how it works, but we're not using it in a very advanced way yet. So for example, um, you can disable this automatic block production and you can make it so comment mock will only do blocks when you tell it to. So it would, you can give it exactly which transaction to include in a block and then it'll make a block that contains precisely those transactions. So this, um, this is sort of features that I don't know if we will need them in the near future, but it's something that we can do very easily now. The advantage, 
against things like um, or over things like integration tests is just that with this you can run real relayers. So Comet Mock will also produce events that relayers would use to actually um, yeah that they base their behavior on. So Comet Mock runs in our interchain security and to end tests it runs with the Go relayer um, and the Go relayer just works without having to adjust it. Mm. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, I think that's it so far from my side. Happy to take any questions if there are any. Does it work with things like IPC? So, like, uh, is there like a cross chain component as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Um, so, you can just start. So, you would have one Comet Mock instance per chain, and then you can run normal relayers between them. Again, because mm -hmm. Comet Mock will index events just like Comet BFT would. Essentially, mm -hmm. it will take the events from the blocks, right? And it will provide them to relayers that ask. And therefore, you don't need to do anything special. You just start up one Comet Mock instance per chain you want to start, and then have the relayers talk to the Comet Mock instances. And um, that's all you need to do. It'll do IBC perfectly fine. Yeah. Amazing. Um, uh, Anmol, you're you're integrating this into Starship, right? Uh, lower the resource. Uh, yes, yes, we have an open PR, and uh, we have it working for one node. Now we're just trying to make it multi-node, uh, multi-node, multi-validator setup. So yeah, it'll be out next week, early next week. Uh, with uh, there, I'll also be testing the IBC setup. So like two chains with comment mark enabled with uh, relayers and those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, um, we're also we're also currently trying to see whether it makes sense to integrate it into interchain test um, because they also run like test nets and it could also make sense for them to maybe have an option to run it with this. Um, so if anyone's interested in more, there is um, there is a blog post that potentially goes through the small demo that I gave right, right now as well. Gives a little bit more details and also has a link to the repo if you're interested in checking it out. Cool. Uh, so I know about this, but uh, just the Hermes uh, relayer support, uh, you mentioned that there's some issues on there. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, currently it's there. So there's a limitation in the SDK when running with. Um, when running with out of process Comet BFT, or um, uh, yeah, when you run with out of process Comet BFT, essentially there's an issue with the the gRPC server. It's something that I, I maybe want to give it a look at some point. Um, I don't think I'm not entirely sure. I don't think there's a deep technical limitation, but right now, essentially the um, the the Comet BFT RPC server um, is running. Comet Mock provides it instead. But the SDK gRPC server isn't running. Um, yeah. So, oh, and how this relates to Hermes is that Hermes calls the SDK gRPC server, and Go Relayer is fine with calling just the Comet BFT RPC server. That's why the Go Relayer is working, and Hermes currently is not. I think you have an issue open on the SDK. Maybe we can, I think yeah. we can solve that um, and backport it at least to 47. And yeah. 50. And so, yeah. at least for newer chains, um, this yeah. should be solved. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That, that uh, actually, thanks for reminding me. Um, Comet Mock is also versioned like Comet BFT. So, it, it has releases that correspond to the major Comet BFT releases. Right now, we have it for 34, which is compatible with the SDK 45, for 37, which is compatible with the SDK 47, and for 38, which is compatible with the SDK 50. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Awesome. Anyone have any questions uh, for Philip or if they're looking to use it in their code base, um, give Philip a shout. Yep. Checking. Awesome. Anyone have any high level questions or topics they would want to discuss about the Cosmos SDK? Um, otherwise, we can end a bit earlier.
nada. Okay. Awesome. Then everyone, we can, uh, well, we saw Friday, but if you have a four day week, then you can start the weekend early. Hopefully you're enjoying that nice fall weather um, or rain season or summer, depending on where you are in the world and see you in a month. If you need us, then definitely reach out um, for any questions or any feedback about the SDK. We're always all ears. Awesome, guys. Have a good one. Ta-ta.